Johnson said this. He, he said that, that leaders in general don't need to be instructed or directed as much or as often as they need to be reminded. So today is a reminder and a reinforcement for us. A reminder of the importance of vertical alignment. A reminder of the importance that our English language arts frameworks, as we roll those out, that these units of study will allow for consistency of practice and consistency of purpose, while also providing you as teachers an opportunity for choice. So the standard is the, the what. The instruction is the how. So with that, Amy Abrams. Who is she? <laughs> <laughs> she is a secondary coordinator for language arts and social studies. She's a classroom teacher for more than 20 years. Uh, the highlight of her, her career is her service uh, to our students, particularly on the secondary level. And she's a learning style specialist, and I, I found that out during one of our meetings where she began the meeting asking me how would I like to see this information presented. Uh, and that meant a great deal because learning is social before it's cognitive and we need to know our learners, our students, not only as individuals, most importantly, we need to know them as learners. And so with that, uh, she did provide me with a, a quote, I'm paraphrasing, that, uh, that Albert Einstein said that, that uh, fish do not climb trees. That is a, a paraphrase. And what that means is that once we know uh, who our, uh, our learners are as individuals, how do we respond to them accordingly? So let's make sure that our, our fish have the water that they need to, to survive in. And let's make sure those animals who climb trees, according to the analogy, have what they need. They need to, to, to exist and thrive in the environments in our classroom. She's found a purpose, and that's here today. Amy Abrams, I give you the microphone. Thank you for your service and support. Look forward to working with each other. for coming as well. And also I want to make another mention of, um, of what Pastor Jay has done. Because, of, because he believes that teaching is very important and that your service and commitment to children is really important, what, what this church has done is they have provided lunch for us today. So he and his people have, you know, in the cafeteria, he'll be going there shortly to, um, to set up for that. So that's one way that they could say thank you for what you do. Um, also, Jimmy Max Road House. They provided four $50 gift certificates. Today there'll be one in each, you know, drawn in each grade level. Um, that's another way. They're trying to say thank you for what you do to the community. And then because my friends who are massage therapists, they know how stressed teachers can get, um, they, they provided two hour massages. So we'll raffle those at the very end. So we are supported by a lot of community members. And one of the things, too, I want to thank is for you being here today. Because this is your last day of summer break. And you chose to be here learning um, so that you know what to do and what, for what's best for your kids. So I want to say thank you to you for being here as well. You are the ones who created this. You inspired this work. It comes from you. Part of the job, my job at the district, is to provide you with support. One of the ways that that happened is this spring, I went into every PLC, every building's PLC, and asked questions. We talked about that, talked about things, and I wanted to know how to best support. And here is what you told me: ELA classrooms are inconsistent across the district. Autonomy is important to us. We don't want to be told how to teach. Just take a second to read what your peers had to say regarding support. Oh, we went back. We this one. Okay. I want you to be assured that you were heard. And here's our response. First, the creation of vertically aligned units of study. Within these units of study, they allow you choice, additional purpose for PLC work, 
to create common experiences and expectations for students, grades seven through 10, to meet the demands of self id Secondly, common pre and post assessments to help inform instruction and measure student growth. There we go. Dr. Watts mentioned choice, and that was one of the things that I heard um, loudly, is that choice is very, very important, and the, the team agrees with that. Choice is important. It's affirming and allows us to be who we are. There is going to be a lot of choice in humans. There is also some commitments that we can agree to, that we as a whole can agree to because they unify us. They bring us together. So let's look at the commitments first. So we can commit to utilizing grade level complex text that supports the focus skills of the units. We can agree to a common time frame. This is not block step, it's just a window. We can agree to the unit focus that aligns to the standards. And we can agree to a common assessment, a pre and post assessment for each unit. Now let's look at all of the choice. You get to choose the text. You get to choose the transitions between the, the phases of the unit. We, can agree, we get to choose the conceptual packaging of the units, the themes, the essential questions. We get to choose the end product. If you don't want the um, post assessment to be your end product, you have a project, your choice. You get that choice and your formative assessments. You get to choose what instructional strategies you want to use. And you get to choose how you want to utilize technology and the media. So who was involved in this? Teachers were involved in this. Teachers are the ones who created this. Groups of your colleagues developed the first set of frameworks for grades 7 through 10. There were representatives from every middle school and high school who participated. And there were experts who guided us through this process so that we could come up with a product that would work for camp teachers and that would work for our students to help make them college and career ready. So I just want, just for a second, if you have any part at all of the creation of these or helping, please just stand up for just a second so you can be recognized. They need support. Everything that lives needs support. So I just want you to take a minute and um, look at the supports that the district is going to offer. One of the things that I know 100% as a teacher is that planning time is sacred. It's not something you get all the time, but that is a sacred, sacred thing. Um, the committee would like you to know that the rest of this day is planning. Today is a day of planning. It's for you to make these units, this particular unit, your own, a day for you to collaborate with your grade level colleagues, and a day for you just to kind of really dig in and understand what unit one is. So when we leave, you're going to have room assignments up there, and I'm gonna need my Kent Ridge, Kent Ridge teachers to help out here because this building is a little bit confusing here. So um, if you are in seventh and eighth grade, um, we are gonna be meeting collaboratively in A20, and can I have one of the teachers, a Kent Ridge teacher kind of lead those to A20? Thank you. Okay, and if you are ninth grade, okay, ninth grade, Dave Serena, can you stand up since that's your room? Okay, just follow him. Okay, and he will get you there. And uh, B5 for 10th grade. Okay, and who's one of my 10th grade teachers from Kent Ridge? You can leave them and get them there. Thank you so much. You're going to follow, follow them. So, um, you're going to meet there until 1130. At 1130, we'll meet um, for lunch. And then... We'll go back after lunch and continue to work. We will be back here at 2.45 at 
to close up, and that's when I will uh, raffle off the two massages. The Jimmy Max gift certificates will be ra raffled off in your um, in your breakout sessions. Thank you so much, and enjoy your day. I'm excited to hear about hear your response.